Hello and welcome to Tech Dive. Today we're going to be talking about Vegas Pro 17 and what's changed from 16. So really the new points to talk about are first, I want, to, want you to watch my hands wave around in uh, this uh, LUTs here. More hours of that game than probably... I said LUTs, that's a lookup table. I, uh, this uh, Luminance waveforms here. Watch, watch my hands. Played more hours of that game than probably all of my PC games combined. And the reason why I love Nintendo is they make great... Fun game. Isn't that neat? I think that's really neat. I always love watching uh, waveforms uh, dance around. Every time I color grading, that's just really what I end up doing is just playing with that. So, uh, back to what we're doing. So, so, some of the changes from 16 to 17 are uh, expanded industry leading HDR workflow. So, that idea here is. Uh, uh, HDR is high dynamic range. It's not just about emulating HDR like you would do in Photoshop. Uh, what HDR means is that you get the highest highs and the lowest lows all represented on the same shot. So uh, while this time, you know, you definitely got blacks and whites, it's as, as if you took the picture three separate times. You took a low... Uh, a low f-stop picture, right? A low light picture, a normal light picture, and a highlight picture, and then you composite those images together. That is actually what HDR is, and you can do that with video as well uh, to get a high dynamic range, an un unnatural but extremely cool, extremely dynamic looking. Well, some people argue more natural, uh, but extremely dynamic, extremely cool looking uh, pictures. And so you can actually go into the properties here, and you can turn HDR mode on, and um, you can do it in a couple of different ways. When one thing to note though, you have to have a monitor that can really view high dynamic range uh, to really see what you're doing and a camera to really, uh, you, ha you have to be vi getting a camera that's captured HDR footage to really see it. So just turning it on doesn't make your footage better. Uh, see I can apply it right here and you're going to see some of the deep reds and stuff like that. Uh, that's not, that applying it doesn't just make your footage look better. Uh, you have to actually utilize HDR. So uh, you're going to leave that off unless you're using it, but if you want to use it you now have a great option. Uh, that's right along with 360 video. Um, uh, you can edit 360 video on it too. That's not new. That's new from 16, but that's uh, definitely it's still new enough. I kind of still want to mention it that you can actually output in 360 video as well. So that's definitely a really cool thing if you're doing anything with VR and recording and stuff like that. That's something to remember. Most excited about for Vegas Pro 17 is its more optimized preview performance, and it uses your GPU. It taps into your GPU's power better, and it just gives you a better product when it's doing more complicated. Renders. For example, uh, here's a simple little edit I did. It was a jump edit, and I did a fade to it, if you watch it. And right there, you can see that it fades to the Nintendo Switch. And that makes it uh, that makes it look very... A little, a little less jarring, a little less than what I wanted it there. So, uh, with I edited this originally in Vegas Pro 16. So, I, editing it in Vegas Pro 16 gave me an issue where I actually couldn't see this as well. So, I could see it, and I was thinking with that with that fade overlap, I was like, "Ooh, I really need just a small fade there just to hide my cut." And uh, I made a bad decision. Now, with Vegas Pro 17, I can clearly see that uh, if I roll this back here. Nintendo. It's actually a pretty good little snap cut without Nintendo. without having a fade at all. Especially if I maybe roll it over just a little bit here. A Nintendo Switch. See? And so that, I can see that better because when things get more complicated, uh, sometimes the timeline might stutter or something like that when it's going from clip to clip. But uh, that's not happening any longer in Vegas Pro 17. It's very, very responsive. And so when I say that, I mean, I'm going to add a weird transition here. For this transition, I'm going to add a 3D transition. And these are kind of notorious for needing the GPU and for slowing down things. So when I added a few 3D transitions, uh, it, sometimes it would, it would kind of bog down and my timeline would get a little behind. So if I just had this... Yeah. Nintendo. Well, that that didn't, you know, I gotta actually add it to something here. So let me throw this default on there. Now let's watch this. Yeah, yeah. A Nintendo Switch. Now forget the fact that that's just a bad edit. What I want you to notice is that it's really responsive, right here at the beginning. I just did a 3D effect. Yeah, yeah. I threw that 3D effect on there, cold. Yeah, yeah. A Nintendo Switch. And it and it shows it. It renders it out in real time. 
very effective. So one of the changes from Vegas Pro 17 is its motion, slow motion uh, ability. So uh, one of the problems with slow motion is you're actually generating frames in most cases. So unless you're the slow-mo guys with a high-speed camera, you're really emulating slow motion instead of actually recording in slow motion. So you actually don't have a lot of frames. And so I actually have this very old video footage, and someone has taken a 24 frames a second footage and turn it into 25 second frames a second footage, uh, which is the European PAL uh, standard, and this was definitely sh probably shot at 24 frames a second, but what I'm telling you is, is this has very little information per frame. This is not high candidate slow-mo footage. So why do I get slow-mo footage that is not high, ca high candidacy slow-mo footage? Because I want to show you what they've done, is they've optimized the slow motion look. So when I slow this footage down, it actually does a really good job of kind of blending the frames together to give you a false slow motion. Which, when I say false slow motion, it's not that Vegas is giving you a false, false slow motion. Anything would give you a false slow motion here. Because any editing software with any anything, you only have 25 frames a second. So you're having to show those frames more often. So the question is, how are you going to do that? Well, this is how Vegas does it. So that, that, now you might th still think, oh, I see some chopping a little bit and uh, stuttering. But if you've slowed down a lot of footage, you'll realize that that is actually pretty good looking. The fact, the fact that this is, look at this. So if I hit Control Z and get this smaller, I only have about three seconds worth of footage here, right? It's three seconds worth of footage. And let's stretch this out all the way. Now I have 12 seconds worth of footage. This is like four times as long. That means I'm showing, I'm having to show four times the amount of frames to make this look slow motion. And it has still got a fluid motion look to it, even though it's been slowed down, and even though it didn't have a lot of frames to work with in the first place. So that is definitely an improved slow motion over uh, Vegas's previous slow motion abilities, which were there, but this is definitely a better use of uh, extending the frames. Another feature they've added is screen capturing. Now this is something we're going to have to talk about in the future, but in, in addition to being able to capture video from like a DV tape off of a camera, you can actually capture your own screen footage now too. Now this is something that I think we're going to see more advancedness come along over time. So uh, we'll be talking about this later, but just so you know, this has been added in Vegas Pro 17, and it's also been added in Movie Studios 16 as an update. So an update came out that added it to Movie Studios 16, uh, but it's also here for 17. We'll be talking about more in the f that in the future as it evolves. So when you're editing 4K footage uh, and, and sometimes larger footage files, you might, you might want to do some pre-rendering where you can selectively pre-render to a new video or even do uh, where you can grab some of the source footage and you can create proxy files. So you can hit uh, create video proxy and make a proxy file to break it down and make it easier for a computer to show you what's happening in real time uh, while not actually showing you the, f like the, it's not actually messing with the high quality big video, it's messing with a smaller video to make it easier in a computer to do these changes. For example here, I have a uh, 4K video and I have another 4K video squeezed up in the corner. That's going to take a lot of processing. Um, and so you can actually do this with 8K video files now. And so these 8K K ones are going to have intense bit rates, like crazy bit rates, because when you're working with 8K files, you're actually working with like movie making camera. So uh, that bit rate is something that you definitely, you know, unless you have like the most top of the line computer, you're probably going to be creating a proxy file for it. You now have the ability to create proxy files for your 8K media, which sadly I don't have because I don't have enough subscribers yet. But I tell you what, if I get to a million subscribers, I will buy a cinema 8K camera and do all sorts of cool stuff with it. I promise you that. All right, so one of the next things they've added is uh, they've improved their masking some. So when you ma when you track something, when I say masking, I mean their tracking abilities with their baits or masking, or is it um, Bezier masking? I think I have been calling it baits or masking because I'm crazy, uh, but Bezier masking. But you need some motion tracking to be able to do kind of some kind of special effects. And uh, what they've done is they've actually changed. Uh, 
uh, some ability to to this has changed from 16 where you can actually cr change the shape of your track and that's planar tracking is where you can actually change the shape that you're tracking over time which can give you some really more complicated uh, tracks. So we'll have more on that to tu more tutorials on that soon as well. So that brings us to color grading. So what we're going to talk about is how they've improved your ability to color grade uh, by creating more unified workflow. So you can hit Alt and G, and you can you can see here that they you can open up all these tables all at once. So I like I like this setup right here because I really enjoy a good histogram. To me, that's what makes the most. That's where I can get the most amount of information for what I'm doing. Uh, these are great as well, especially if you're doing uh, color grading, and you can do that a lot easier now. And you can jump from your different tools right here. And this is not the only way you can color grade. You can also do it through your effects as well, including a secondary color corrector where you can isolate colors and change them. So there's obviously a ton of color power in Vegas more than ever before, which is extremely necessary now that we're doing now that it's capable of doing high dynamic range. Really targeting the pro end. So if you're someone where you're like, "Huh, these this is all neat, but I don't know if I'm ever going to have a need for any of this crazy awesome stuff. Uh, you're probably looking more at Movie Studios. Movie Studios is really, really robust of a program. It's the same thing as Vegas Pro. It's just pared down a little bit more and a whole lot cheaper. Uh, but if you are an industry professional, you very much might want what Vegas Pro has to offer. Last but certainly not least is Project Notes. So here's the cool thing about Project Notes is you can make notes. And so if you're working with other people, you can be like, you get this done. If you're uh, if you're trying to be lazy and you want to skip an edit, you can be like, fix the color later. Or if you uh, uh, if you nested too many timelines and you think it's going to be confusing, you can be like, uh, blank footage is nested. You can leave all those notes in there, and you can well, you can give yourself something to do, like so somebody can come back and somebody can watch your project, and then they can come back and they can be like, uh, get rid of all your us, and then you can go through cut out all your us, and then be like, ah, oh, resolved, and that is what I like. I like that resolve button. I'm gonna make my own to do list just so I can go through and hit resolve on everything. And that is Vegas Pro. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please like it. Uh, if uh, not really a tutorial, it's more of a uh, product showcase. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it. If you uh, would like more Vegas Pro content or Movie Studios content, please subscribe to our channel. I come out with multiple videos a week, and I'm ready to make more today and tomorrow. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Oh, and if you would like to buy or upgrade your software, if you do it through our affiliates link, that would help us out a ton. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.